All of our mothers, palakpakan natin lahat ng mga mothers. Uh, they, uh, ito yung totoong kasabihan na kung wala sila, wala tayo dito lahat. <laughs> so, po, salamat po. Please make it a point that you um, appreciate all the moms today. Later on, we will be praying for them. You know, most mothers, especially those who know the Lord, uh, spent, kuya dito na lang, makakalimutan ko yan sa harap. spend their entire lives praying and hoping and dreaming for us. You know, I, I remember my own mom who uh, uh, my, my, my dad knew, my father knew that I wanted to do something else with my life apart from what the Lord was telling me to do. Alam ng tatay ko yun, you know. But he would always just say, pag pray mo, pag pray mo, Pray about it, pray about it, pray about it, pray about it, pray about it. That's all that my dad would do. He was trying to teach me, being a dad, how to, how to find God's will by praying about it. No? So I would say, Dad, parang ganito, it's like, pray about it. See what God's going to tell you. Ever since I was a child, that's what, you know. But my mom, she never said pray about things. She will say, you must pray. Kakaiba yung dating, di ba? Parang... Sa tatay ko, ipag-pray mo. Parang medyo may pagka-optional, di ba? Sa nanay ko, hindi. Pag-pray mo yan. Sa Tagalog, ganun yung dating, no? And that was her anthem throughout her life. You know, uh, when I, I started to, to grow up, uh, my dad would say, well, what did the Lord tell you? My mother will say, the Lord said. So, you know, sabi ng tatay ko, ano sabi ng Panginoon sa'yo? Ang nanay ko, sasabihin niya, ang sabi ng Panginoon, Parang may direct line siya kay Jesus. Tingin ko nagkakateksan sila kahit noong unang panahon, wala pang text. Tingin ko yung nanay ko tsaka si Jesus, nagkakateksan sila eh. Parang sinasabi ng Panginoon ng Holy Spirit, makulit siyang anak mo, diretsahin mo na. Sabihin na ano-ano. You know, and then, um, and then when things, when I start to grow up, you know, and I took on a, a course in my life, you know, and I would say, Mom, ganito, 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 and I had this opportunity, that opportunity, this opportunity, You know, my, my dad would say, you know, pag-pray mo. You know, pag-pray mo yan. Pag-pray mo yan. Seek the Lord about it, you know. And my mom said, ewan ko sa'yo, basta sabi ng Panginoon, magpastor ka. And I, it irritated me. Literally irritated me kasi that's what she would say. It's, it's just like, nagpe-pray din naman ako eh, but iba yung sinasabi sa'yo, iba yung sinasabi sa akin. You know. And then, you know, and that went on and then I, uh, um, It so happened now that uh, as I was growing up, I was uh, in my uh, early to mid-twenties mid already, and uh, I started to like another girl apart, apart from her. You know, I started to like another girl apart from her. Kasi nag-break kami dalawa. Anyway, that's a different love story on its own sa Valentine's na yun. Basta nag-break kami, I started to like another girl. And she was a Christian too, you know. Hindi siya yung Amerikano sa Pilipinas. Nakalag-ahawin kami ang nanay ko! Sabi niya, basta ako si Marisa pa rin. Siya yung pinagpe-pray ko. Sabi ko, eh, kung maligaw sa kanya, ikaw pa lang pe-pray para sa kanya. Eh. You know? Basta! Doon na tapos yung usapan. Okay. You know? So that didn't work out. But that's the, the, the story of, of my life. You know, when it comes to my mom. When it comes to my mom. I was closer to my dad. Uh, but that's what, looking back, that's the story of my life. She... Often, sometimes, would take the antagonist position. You know how sometimes moms will do that? Yung nagpapakakontrabida para turuan ng anong tama. Nakakainis yun, ano? Pag, pag ginagawa ng mga nanay natin yun, you know? But, but they will do that, and, and, and it would just, you know, and looking back, that's the impact it made. Her words were very important to me in that sense. Looking back, ganun kalaki yung impact nung, nung words niya. And I praise God for, for a mom who... would do that, you know, uh, for me, when everybody else, you know, would, would seem otherwise. Now, my dad, hindi siya consentidor, but he really wanted you to seek the Lord about it. And I, that's on a different plane. Ibang usapan yun bilang tatay sa Father's Day, dun tayo mag-usap tungkol dun. But insofar as my mom, that's what she did. And that, that influence reverberates in my own family now, uh, with my wife doing the same thing to, to our kids, you know, uh, Uh, yung mga tatay who are quick to give advices and fix things 
mom would sit down, you know, my wife would sit down and explain stuff and take the time to like walk through the process. You know, kung paano tayo mga guys kuminsan sa atin, one plus one, two. Huwag na pag-isipan yun, two na nga eh. Mom would say, kasi paano naging two yung one plus one? She'll back up, you know, and she'll explain paano naging two yung one plus one. Kasi yung one, kunyari, meron kang one na candy. <laughs> sa mga lalaki, two na nga eh, two na eh, two na. Hindi, kasi yung one, one na candy, di ba? Kung mukhang tanyo yung life. But it works. But it works. You know, when, when they said that the husband, as the Bible says, is the head of the home, the moms are the heart of the home. It's, it's not even, to be the heart of the home is not second nature to the mom. It's, it's, that's just the way it is, you know. They are truly, kahit na yung tatay sobrang bait, sobrang ganito, sobrang ganyan, the moms are the heart of the home. It's an undeniable fact. I think a great part of it is because we came from them. You know, she felt our heartbeats long before dad ever did. And so that's the importance of moms. And we want to, you know, to, to take the time today to, to thank all of you, you know, to do that. And today, we want to have the privilege of praying with you and praying for you. Kasi buong buhay namin kayo yung nagpe-pray, you know, sa amin. Uh, I had the privilege of having both a mother and a father to, to pray for me and pray with me in in my uh, difficult and learning times. And my kids have that privilege with their mom as well. But today, we want to take time to do that. Uh, alam nyo, ganun ka-importante yung words. Sabi nila, your, your walk is more important than your talk. Today, I want to tell you something that's kind of different because although your walk, yung gawi mo, yung gawa mo, yung lakad mo, um, in the end result is more important than what you say. No? Yung ano yung ginagawa mo sa, huli, sa pulot dulo, mas mahalaga kaysa sa sinasabi mo. We cannot deny the fact na yung sinasabi mo ang unang naririnig bago yung lakad mo. Okay, kasi oftentimes when we hear the, yung kasabihan ng mga, ng mga puti na your walk talks more than your talk talks, I understand. Y- yung salita mo, mas naki, mas yung lakad mo, mas naiintindihan kisa sinasabi mo. Naiintindihan ko yon But we cannot deny the fact na yung sinasabi mo ang unang naririnig bago makita kung ano yung ginagawa mo. No? Even the Bible gives important, you know, uh, uh, attention to what you do with what you say. From all over scripture, from the very first to the very end, God places a premium on what we say and how we say things. You know, have you ever said something? May sinabi kang isang bagay na tama naman, tas mabuti naman, pero pangit yung pagkakasabi. No? Kahit sabihin mong ibang intention mo, iba yung gusto mong gawin, ang sakit sa tenga pa rin eh. Di ba? Di ba? So you know, it's, 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 so we're going to talk about that today. As you're turning to Colossians chapter 4, I have this behind me. Okay, now for several weeks now, I've been getting bugged by people. Kasi election tomorrow. First thing, so I'm going to set aside for a second. Bang pineplace yan dyan. Kasi people from all over the world are asking me, pati yung barbero ko kahapon, are asking me what's my opinion on the elections. Again, I am not a political guy. I am opinionated about many things, but I'm not a political guy. I don't like playing politics. No? Because I have a God who is over them all. Amen? Amen. Tignan nyo America. America, did you hear a flush? Psh, sa CR? Kita nyo yun? May kayo yung flush sa CR last week? Last, last week? America po yun. Papabal, papunta na pa. Ilalim na. Okay. Okay. Kasi if you think, sabi ng barbero ko hapon, Pastor, anong tingin mo sa election ngayon? Sabi ko, anong ko sa election? Ang pagpili ng presidente ay parang pinapapili ka kung anong klaseng STD yung gusto makuha. Okay. <laughs> yun ang tingin ko sa election ng, sa presidential balls in so far as I'm concerned. Na parang pinapapili ka, so, anong gustong cancer o kaya STD ang gusto makuha? You know? Kasi lahat may, rili- may tililing eh, no? Opo, opo. So, but sa Amerika mas malala. Sa Amerika mas malala. Kasi 
Ngayon, yung dalawa na nga lang partido nila, tapos yung dalawa, parang pareho lang sila. Konti lang ang pinagkakaiba, pero pag sa suma total, parang iisa lang din sila. No? So, meron kang isa doon na Democrat na, of course, mas malala yun, na puna sa Pilipinas, tingin ko sa mental na ipinasok yun, asawa ni Bill Clinton, no? Tapos yung isa naman, mababaliw pa lang. Bakit? Kasi yung buhok niya, kulay pula, tapos nandito na nga yung party niya, ipinipilit pa niyang may buhok siya, tapos pinahaba niya ng mahaba, tapos nung mahaba na ipapalin niya all over sa ibabas, ibibilog niya ng isang malaking puyo. So pag humangin, tumataas yung one part ng buhok na sumasara ulit. Come on, di ba? Pag ganun ka style mo, may problema ka na talaga. Okay? Gayahin mo si Kuya Rodel, tanggapin mo na. Di ba? Konektado ang noo sa batok, bigay ni Lord yan. Tipid sa gel. Less, less problems. Mga anak ko, problema kahapon, anong gel? Anong gel? I'm like, halbuhin lang natin yan para matapos na pa. Ubus pa na hon eh, no? But you know, uh, but man, you know, so pray for America, man. I mean, uh, sabi ko sa miss ko kahapon, as I watch the American political things, I am so thankful to be in the Philippines. Wow. It just officially became more fun in the Philippines at least over the next four years. You know, so, so, uh, pag-pray niyo po, yung mga kamag-anak niyo sa Amerika, dahil sila po ay literally magbabago ang kanilang, hindi lang, alam niyo sa Pilipinas, nagbabago ang political landscape natin, pero ang ugalit, gawit kultura natin, hindi nagbabago. Okay? Sometimes that's a bad thing, you know. Sa Amerika po hindi. Sa kanila kasi, talagang makikialam ang gobyerno nila. Pag nanalo si Clinton, mas malaki ang problema natin at mukhang mananalo siya. Grabe. No? Uh, her first words are, Christians have to give up the, what they believe in order to agree with society. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Ayos. Okay. Can you imagine that? No? Ang problema daw, walang boses sa mga pastor. Pare-pareho lang sa turing. No? Dito, pag nagalit tayo sa presidente, pwede natin paalisin. Tama? <laughs> pwede tayo mag-gera patanit, paalisin lahat. Doon hindi. Eh, no? Masyadong komportable yung buhay na para magpaalis ng kahit sino. So, you know. But people have asked me, so I'm gonna set this aside and leave it there. First, you need to pray for the elections tomorrow. Second, you need to understand that whoever God places there, Whoever God places there, you need to pray for them. Whether you like them or not, you got to pray for them. Okay? Third, kami po bilang mga pastor, our job is to connect with whoever God places locally and nationally so that we could minister to them. Okay? Whether negatively or positively, we need to make an impact on them. Okay? With regards to who you're supposed to vote for, please do not vote for your kamag-anak, kababayan, kasama sa probinsya, itigil na natin yung ugaling ganyan. Kalokohan yan eh. No? Ang daing mga tao. Ako, kasi pinsan ko yung kamag-anak ng kapitbahay, ng tita, ng lola ko. Ha? Parang kami ng kapatid ko dati, nag-aaway kami kasi Lakers siya. Ako, Boston Celtics. Galit na galit ako sa Lakers. No? Finally, nagalit na yung tatay ko. Tumigil kayong dalawa. Nanunod kami ng championship eh. Shhh! Kayong dalawa. Nathaniel, James, Bo. Ikaw ba kilala ka ni Larry Bird? Ikaw? Kilala ka ba ni Magic Johnson? Hindi po. E pikaro kayo nila, tumigil kayo ang ingay niyo. Hindi ako makapanood ng palabas. Hindi nung pala kayo nila, nag-aaway kayo. Okay? So yun. Please don't vote because of that. Okay? Now if you ask me who I vote, who I would vote for, alright, who I would vote for, if it were up to me, and I have to explain it this way because this is international Bible. Bible, church. Okay. Whether my chance manalo or not, I always encourage voting for the Christian guy. Because he is a child of God. I don't care kung number 300 million sa polls. Pananagutan nyo sa Panginoon kung sino isusulat nyo dyan. Sabi sa Bible, every man will give account of himself to God. I always vote for the Christian guy until the Christian guy does something immoral, 
or is not right, I will vote for the Christian guy or the guy who wants to work with Christians. Wala akong pakailam sa ibang kulto, kaya nga kulto, tawag doon, hello! Or the guy who works with Christians, I don't care who they are, I will vote for the guy who is first a Christian, second who works with Christians. Pastor, bobo yung mga Kristiyano. Puro na nga tayo na matalino, engot pa rin yung bansa natin eh. Hello? Alam nyo bang mas matataas pa yung mga pinag-aralan ng Senado at Kongreso na ilan sa atin kesa sa Senate ng Amerika ngayon? Literally, kunin mo yung presidential balls. Hindi lahat ha. Kunin mo yung presidential balls. Ha? Panis sa US Senate ngayon. Kahit yung presidential ball ng American dalawa. Okay? Kasi yung isa, may ari ng hotel. Yung isa, abogado na hindi naman napapractice, asawa ng dating presidente. Yun lang ang credentials nila. Okay? So please don't give the intelligent vote with me. Kasi as far as I'm concerned, as a Christian, I need to vote for the Christian guy. Or to one who wants to work with Christians. Hindi yung wants to work next time, next year, next You know, you already is working with and wants to work with Christians. If you've not taken the time to study that, ha, ang mga Kristiyano hindi pa tumigil ng panahon para pag-aralan kung sino dapat iboto base sa Biblia, dapat tanggalan ka ng karapatan bumoto. Kasi nagboboto ka na hindi mo iniisip pananagutan mo sa Panginoon yan. Okay? You, you see, I'm not talking politics. I'm talking about spiritual things. Because in the Christian life, everything is spiritual and everything is about God. May nag-reply sa isang comment ko, tinanong, Eh, Pastor, bakit Christian? Gato, gato, gato. Tanong ko, kasi Christian siya. Period. Bakit, Pastor? Kasi ang Kristiyano, okay, kung sino pa yan, merong Holy Spirit yan. At the Bible says, not by might, not by power, but by, ano? Ano, 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 ano? Lakas nung para marunong katabi mo, ano? The Spirit. Change happens by the work of the Holy Spirit. Pastor, pag ang Kristiyano hindi gumalaw, pananagutan niya sa Panginoon yan. Huwag ka mag-alala, tatanggalin ni Lord yan o pagdudusahin ng Panginoon yan. Parang tayo din, pag nagkakamali tayo, nagdudusa din tayo sa choices natin. Ganun din. Okay? Ganun din. Yun lang ang guidance, guidelines ko sa pagboto ng kahit ano. Kahit ano. Yun lang. Pastor, bakit doon ako ang eleksyon? Merong pastor na tumakbo. Kasi po, pastor yun. Ang pastor, hindi dapat bumababa sa presidency. Pastor, are you saying mas mataas ka pa sa past president? Hindi po, dahil hindi naman ako politika. Pero tinawag po ako ng Panginoon. Ang alam ko, title ni Lord ni Jesus, ano eh, King of Kings, tsaka Lord of Lords. Sabi ng tatay ko, the ministry of the prophet is to the king, but never the, ki- the prophet to become a king. Okay? That's my take. Kuha niyo. You can quote me on that. Okay? I've always believed that. I've been saying that since I was a child in ministry. 26 years, I've been saying that since day one. Since day one. Okay? Hindi pa ako nagpapastor. Actually, I've been saying that. Okay? I always go for that guy. I don't care what other people say. I vote for the Christian guy and the guy who wants to work with Christians. Hindi yung I will work for you if you vote for me. But the guy who wants to work with Christians already, those are the ones I want. Because those are children of God. Okay? And they will have the discernment of the Holy Spirit to work with us. Okay? and to do what we need to do. Pansin niyo ang Amerika, kaya nagkakaloko-loko ngayon, kasi iniwan nila yung prinsipyong yan. And they began to vote for who is good for politics, who is good for economics, who is good for everything else, except the ones who will follow God with all of his heart. Hindi ba sabi sa Bible, tingnan niyo sa Kings, pag niyo yung Kings, tsaka Chronicles, tama? Kilala, pag ang King ay ginamit ng Panginoon nakalagay, 
and he followed God. And he followed his father's footsteps. He was following God. Yung pinagpala parati yun. Diba? Pero pag lumik siya, yari. No? Tama. So pag-aralan niyo mabuti, ha? At ipag-pray niyo. Okay? Pagkabukas din nung kayo. Kasi sabi ng pastor ko, hindi po. Tinan niyo sa Bible. Malinaw na, malinaw na, malinaw ang Bible. Sing linaw ng araw pag gising mo sa umaga. Okay? So be responsible because God will make you responsible for your choices. Okay? Okay na. Sinabi ko na. Okay. Good. I don't broadcast that, but you need to understand that. So you know where I stand. Okay? Alright? Back to the word. Words, just like what I said now, are powerful. Words are powerful. Did you know that uh, the longest peace treaty, the longest peace treaty, yung walang gera, in the world, the longest it has lasted is a little bit over 24 hours. Pagkapirmahan, girahan ka agad. Bakit? Kasi kumuha tayo ng abogado para magsulat ng kasulatan, para pagtapos kumuha tayo ng abogado, para mag-interpret ng sinulat ng abogado, at pagkatapos kumuha tayo sa pang-abogado, para ipaliwalang saan, sinabi ng abogado, sinulat ng abogado. Bakit ngayon? Pag bumili ka ng McDonald's, may nakalagay. Ay, dito, wala na masyado eh. Pag walang resibo, libre. <coughs> Bakit kailangan ng resibo para bumili ng donut? Tama? Kasi ang tao, ngayon, Wala nang tiwala sa salita ng tao. There was a time when people were good to their word. Tama ba yan? There was a time when people were good to their word. Ngayon hindi na. Lahat ng bagay may kontrata. Tapos yung kontrata, merong kontrata. No? Ang daming fine print sa ilalim. Mga just in case. No? Pagka sumablay, pagka ganito. Why is that? Because words are powerful. We live and die by our words. Ganun ka-importante ang words. Nagpunta kami sa, sa nung, nung Holy Week sa Mount Samat. Doon sa may krus ng bataan. Ang laki nun, no? Dahil kung gusto ipako doon. No Holy Week, ang dami, no? Sabi ng mga anak ko, lalo si Ashton, I had to tell the whole story from World War I hanggang matapos yung World War II. Grabe. Yun ang pinakamahaba akyat sa tanang buhay ko. Pag mataas na nga yung akyat, manipis ng oxygen, hinihika ka, tapos itong anak mo, pinakukwento paano nagsimula ang World War I. Siyempre, ang two. Atas ka muna sa one. Di naman nila alam eh, di ba? Bakit? Para lang umabot kami kay General MacArthur. Kasi bakit? Because Samat was the last stand of Bataan bago pumuntang. Wala na nakakala ng Philippine history. Ano ba? Niisip niyong Samat yung doon sa may ano. Nueve de Febrero, kanan, Samat papuntang Mega Mall. Ano ba? Layo mo, Brad. Bundok sa Bataan. Doon nakatira si Leche. Di ba, Bonnie? I had to tell the story to him and say, So, siya naman talagang glued siya. Oo, tapos, tapos. Hindi sila nanalo sa bundok kasi they had to ask, ba't may mga kanyon doon? Ba't ganyan? Sa bawat ikot, tituro ko, oh yan, nangyari siyang ganito. Hanggang matapos kami kay MacArthur, I can't tell you how happy I was na matapos kami kay MacArthur. Si hinihingal na ako eh. At nung umalis siya, papuntang Australia, sinabi niya, I shall return. Yan, yan. Oh, tapos yung kwento, di ba? Next question. Nag-return ba siya? Oh, anak, nag-return siya. Eh, ba't kasi niya iniwan? Di ko alam, anak. Tumatawag ng resback. O, tapos, <laughs> bumalik siya. Tapos pagbalik niya, nanalo. Paano nanalo? Marami siyang dilang kakampi. Oo, parang ganun. 
Kasi nangyayari, ito masama eh. Nagkamali ako eh, kasi history buff po ako eh. No? Nung, 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 nung nagkaroon ng gera dito sa Japan and sa area natin dito, nagkaroon din ng laban sa Europe. Okay, doon sa ano, sa Germany, sa ano kasi si Hitler. Ah, ano nangyari doon? Patay. Ngayon yung European front, kailangan ikwento ko na. Meron siyang solusyon. Notice, I, I said that to say this. Sabi niya ganito. Dad, kung nag-aagawan pala si Hitler at saka itong Japan, dapat ang ginawa natin, pinag-away lang natin yung Hitler at saka Japan. Common sense, ano? Para hindi na tayo madamay. Sila na lang yung pinag-away natin. Diba? How I wish life was that simple. Hindi pwede na kasi ipit tayo sa gitna, kasi gato, gato, gato. Hindi sila pwedeng basta sila lang yung mag-away. Gusto lang control the world. Hindi niya maisip na may taong gusto mag-control ng buong mundo. Tama? Hindi niya, hindi niya maisip eh. But sa kanya, that's... Ganun lang ka-important yung words. That's just how important the words are. Sagot niya, eh bakit kasi hindi binantayan yung Pilipinas? Ah, yan ang problema. Kasi si Douglas MacArthur yung senior, sinabi niya hindi sinunod. Eh bakit hindi sinunod? Wow, grabe ang haba namin. No? Gusto ko sabihin, tapos pinatay sila. Eh tap, wala, basta patay na, patay na. Huwag ka na magtanong, patay na. <laughs> Gusto ko sabihin, <laughs> wala kami katapusan. No? Grabe, because sa kanya words were powerful and affirming. And Colossians chapter 4 says, habang nakakulong si Apostle Paul taught us how to be real Christians. Yung totoong Kristiyano. If you want change, this is what will happen, what needs to happen. Sabi niya, if you look at it carefully, sabi niya, continue in prayer, be watchful and with thanksgiving at the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ. On account of which I am in prison, that I might make it clear. Sabi at yung dapat daw mangyari. To make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. Look what it says. This is how you should live. Para maging effective daw tayong kristyano. Okay? One, in verse 5, sabi niya, Conduct yourselves wisely toward outsiders, making the best use of your time. Last week we said, be time conscious about things. Making the best use of verse 6, which where we will be today. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you might know how you ought to answer each person. Kung gusto mara magkaroon ng impact for God sa mga tao, apart from, from living wisely, apart from, you know, taking advantage of God-given opportunities like we learned last week, be careful how you speak because words are powerful. Words are powerful. It is not true that you should just speak from the heart because often the Bible says sa mga tao, ako ba si Pastor, prank ako eh. I speak from the heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. So don't speak from the heart. Huwag yung kung anong maisip mo, ibubulalas ng bibig mo. Kung anong maramdam mo, mababalat mo agad. Kasi I speak from the heart. When you speak from the heart, you violate scripture. Bakit, pastor? Because the Bible says the heart is deceitful. Kasi, pastor, ayoko maging peke. Hindi ko sinabi maging peke. Sinabi ba dyan maging peke ka? Sabi niya, no. Let your speech always be grace, gracious. Ibig sabihin, I'll explain that to you later. Mag-isip ka how you should speak. Don't just speak. No? When we speak irresponsibly and carelessly, we hurt people. We disappoint people. No? And then pag nabulalas mo yan, tas nalaman mo nagkamali ka, and dahil mo ng pride, hindi mo ngayon mabawi. So, papanindiganan mo. Tama? Often, ganon. No? Eh, nasabi ko na eh. Di mo ngayon makapipabalik. 
Sabi ng tatay ko, ang salita daw parang bato. Pag binato mo yung ganon, hindi mo na mahahabol. Repairing damage ka na lang pag may tinamaan ka. Huh? Look at Colossians chapter 3 again, verse 16 to 17. Rather, sabi niya ganito, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, not just the word of Christ, but let it dwell. I love the word dwell. Dwell or to remain. No, I dwell, I remain. Yan ang sinabi sa Greek. Ibig sabihin, mamahay. Mamahay. Sa iyo. Mamahay sa iyo. Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all, and what's the word? Wisdom. Does that word sound familiar? Two weeks ago, we spoke about wisdom. Ibig sabihin ng wisdom is the knowledge of God given to you, how you should live. Wala tayong basta wisdom lang. No? Paso, di ba yung wisdom is knowledge you gain over the years? No. I know a lot of foolish old people. <laughs> wisdom is knowledge from God. So sabi niya, admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as... Ano daw? As... Kaya gusto ko ng kristyano. Kasi sa puso ng isang kristyano, Christ is Lord. One thing I understand about Lord, ha? ang Lord, pag hindi mo sinunod, mararamdaman mo. Tama? Nasubukan nyo na bang mag-willfully violate ang mga nagdadrive dito? Nagmamadali ka! Madaling-madali ka na! Medyo emergency! Nasisiar ka na! So, nag-counterflow ka! o nag no left turn ka, o nag no right turn ka, kahit pakiramdam mo, may tama ka rin naman na okay lang doon, kinakabakabahan ka. Bakit? Bakit? Kasi you know you have willfully disobeyed. At pag nahuli ka, wala kang karapatan magreklamo. Tama? Tama. No? That's why ako, I don't like doing that. If the line says that way, we follow the line. No? Isa araw, kumana na akong gano'n, bilang, BEEP! May nakamotor. Ako pa yung pinagalitan. Kasi siya, didiretso. Nasa, nasa sidewalk. Kayo mga tag, nagmumotor. Mag-ayos kayo. Hindi kayo pinabayaan, binigyan ng karapatan to swerve. Sa Amerika, ang motor, nasa linya din. Ah. Kahit sa Pilipinas, sinabi si Pastor Rigorata, nagmumotor eh. Pastor, pag nakabangga ka ng motor, kahit siya'y mali, dapat, ano, ikaw po babayad. Sa'yo, nek-nek mo. Bahala ka sa buhay mo. Pag ikaw nasa gasaan ko, ah, dahil mali ka, tutulungan kita. Dali kita ospital. Lalagay ko yung pangalan mo sa bill. Bakit? Eh, kasalanan mo. Eh, ex-ex ka dyan. Tama? Siya po yung galit sa'kin, sa mga tiis sa'kin. I'm like, may signal light ako, pakanan ako. Di ba? Weird. Pero pag nag-violate ka, baka baka bahal ka. Bakit? Because you know you did something that you violated with. Tama? I remember one time, pasok ko sa CR. CR na CR daw. Pag CR kong ganun, sabi ng babae sa akin, what are you doing here? Nasa Amerika. So, no CR. Kinabahan ako kagad. Alam mo, sa Pilipinas, mangyayari yun. Ay, sorry po, sorry po. Do? Sa Amerika, mapagkawa na ka stalker. Di ba? Sabi, what are you doing here? Sabi ng babae ko, Ah, uh, I need to go to the bathroom. Yeah, but you're in the wrong bathroom. Buti na pati ko sa kanan. Pag tingin ko may wall urinal. I don't think girl bathrooms have wall urinals. Sabi mo ba? I'm so sorry. Hindi siya pala yung nagkamali. Ako pa yung pinagalita ng una eh. No? When you violate something, it tells you that. The Bible says, look, but in your hearts, set apart, ibukot mo raw sa puso mo. Ha? Ibig sabi, ito yung buong puso mo. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Kaya dapat nauna si Kristo. Christian. 
Christ muna. In your hearts, ibukod mo raw, set apart Christ as Lord. Siya yon above everything else. Everything else. Yung buong puso mo, si Christ, nakahiwalay. May sarili siyang chamber where He is Lord over the rest of your heart. You see, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you about to ask you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But with, do this with gentleness and respect. Wow. The power of words. Do it with gentleness and respect. Why? Because here is truth. Okay? A life of godly character, conduct, and conversation will always be a powerful witness. Maraming sikat na pastor, maraming magagaling, maraming mga church na maraming, 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 maraming libu 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 yung tao. Uh, maraming mga pastor na mala ang dating nila parang artista uh, Ganito, ganyan, you know. Uh, but, the, but the truth of the matter is this. Truth, a life of godly character, conduct, and conversation will always be a powerful witness. Hindi po natin maidi-deny yung katotohanan na yan. Kapag kang isang buhay ay maayos ang kanyang karakter, hindi yung ibig sabihin ng paninindigan, bagos ibig sabihin ay pagkamakajos. Pag ang kanyang buhay ay gawe at gawe makadios, ha? Ang kanyang pakikitungo ay makadios, at kanyang salita ay makadios. It will always, always, always be a powerful witness. Always a powerful witness. Merong kwento dati, meron doon isang pastor na sa Amerika. Naiboto siya ng isang malaking church sa Atlanta area. Laki ng church. Laki ng church. Merong ilang jako no ayaw sa kanya. E democratic vote. Talo sila. So ang ginawa nila, nag-hire sila ng special investigator, private investigator, to investigate tong buhay ng pastor. And over the next one to two months, two months ata, they followed everything about him. I mean, they locked down everything. Hinahanapan nila ng butas para yung pastor na to matanggal sa church nila. Okay? Okay? So, hinahanapan nila ng butas. I mean, they looked everywhere. And two months later, nagbayad yung mga jako, no? And then they paid him, and then binalik, pagtiin nila, yung binalik na pera ng mga, na papeles ng mga tao, binigay sa kanila makapal na logs. 60 pages of logs. Two months eh. 60 pages binigay. This is our report. Binigay na ganon. Thank you for your time. Alis. Pag alis ko, oh, sabi ng Jaco, no? Bab- oh, bakit walang laman? Nakalagay lang day one, day two, day three, hanggang day 60. And after 60 days of investigation, they didn't find anything, so they gave it to him. Sabi niya nito sa investigator, whoa, 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 whoa. We paid you money to give us evidence. Sabi ng investigator, Yes, you did. And what's where's the evidence? Sabi ng investigator, Yan, that's the evidence. Sabi ng mga jakano, What do you mean you give us evidence? That's the evidence. There's nothing written here except day one up to day 60. Sabi ng ano, you paid us to look for evidence that is damning to him o makasisira sa kanya na maling ginagawa niyang pamumuhay. Tama? And we observe him every day. From day 1 to day 60, we found nothing. So there's your report. Thank you for your money. Wow! Binabasa ko sa akin, wow, I'd like to have that kind of a report. Can you imagine? That witness is powerful. But those things begin with your tongue. With the way we speak. Now look at the word. What, is, what do we mean by that? When he said, watch your tongue. Righteous investments making a difference. He says, watch your tongue. Your words are powerful. Let your words be gracious and impacting. Build bridges other than, rather, to others rather than burn them with your words. 
That's the essence of watch your tongue. Or watch how you speak as we read sa verse ka sa Colossians. Sabi ni Apostle Paul. Pastor, anong ibig sabihin ba nito? First, when he says, watch your speech, be careful with your speech. The first thing he said about it was, sabi niya, that your speech should be gracious. Gracious. Pastor, ano yung, ano yung gracious? Gracious means cheerful, positive, filled with grace. And I love that last part. Influenced by the Holy Spirit. Paano yun, Pastor? Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Let's go back to those verses. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, teaching psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to Him for all things. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. I don't have it here in my annotation, so you have to, like, Throw that up there. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, tells us how, what it means, pag sinabing gracious, spirit-controlled speech. Look what it says. Do not let any unwholesome talk out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it might, may benefit those who listen. Hindi po ibig sabihin ito, bawal kayong mag-correct. Okay? Kasi the moment I said gracious, everybody, eh, paano na yan? Hindi, hindi na ako mag-correct. Eh, paano kung mali sila? Eh, paano kung ganito? Eh, paano kung hindi tama yung ginagawa? Eh, paano kung ganito? Oh, defensive. Huwag ka defensive. Bistado ako agad. No? Notice what it says. Do not let any unwholesome speech come out of your mouth. I, I love how that is put. But only such as good as, what? In other words, kung kailangan mo magsabi ng medyo matigas o mahirap tanggapin o masakit ng konte, mahapdi ng konte. Dapat ang tema nito ay pagsasabuo pa rin ng tao, hindi sa kanilang kasiraan. No? E kung minsan kung makapagsalita tayo, ha? parang hinubad mo yung buong pagkataon ng tao, pinag-apak-apakan mo, nilab- ha? nilablamon mo doon sa Pasig Rivers, pinasuot mo ulit. As it, fi- I love how Apostle Paul says that, you know, as it fits the occasion that it might give grace. Grace. You know, you know what is grace? We're familiar with grace. We love receiving grace. Yan ang problema ko sa maraming tao. Favorite natin tumanggap ng grace ni God. In fact, we say it all the time, I by the grace of God. Ay sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Alam niyo yung grace? It means it's pabor. Pabor na binibigay sa'yo na hindi mo kayang bayaran. No? It's paid forward to you. You don't deserve it, but it's given to you. Yan, grace. Lahat tayo gusto ng grace. We want the grace of God. Binabaitan tayo ni Lord kahit alam niya magsusuway tayo. Tama? Papatawarin tayo kahit alam natin susuway tayo. Papagpalain tayo kahit di tayo faithful. Tama? We want God to increase our business. Tama? To double our money. Hindi naman tayo nabibigay ng tights. Magbibigay ka ng tights, kinakalkulo pa. O, nag-tights na ako, nag-opening na ako, tapos... Lord, pero pagpalain mo. Come on! We all want the blessing of God. We all want the grace of God, pero tayo hindi tayo gracious. Ha? Hindi, mahilig tayo, gusto natin yung pagpapala ng Diyos, pero hindi tayo mapagpala. Katunayan, pag mapagpala tayo, madalas mabilang din tayo. Dami ko nang binibigay. Magka-tights ka pa, mag-aano ka pa, mag-ministry pa, mag-aganto, mag-aganto, mag-aganto. Did you ever ask yourself, kung sinabi ng Panginoon, kung bibilangan mo rin lang naman ako, huwag mo na akong bigyan. Kasi ginagawa natin sa tao yung parate, di ba? Don't we say that all the time? When people count, what do we say? Eh, kung bibilangan mo lang ako, huwag mo na akong bigyan. Did you know that's what we say to God? When we give our offerings? I wonder if God says that. James, 
Kung bibilangan mo rin lang naman ako, wala akong bigyan. Para naman hindi sa gawain ng Panginoong gagawin natin ito. Tama? Para naman ipaggagawa ng mga pastor dito at mga, ng mga mansion sa Corinthian Gardens yung pera na ito. We love receiving the grace of God. Yung pag-isig mo, pinapatawad na kagad tayo ng Panginoon sa mercy niya. Tama? Pero tayo, wag na wag may magkakaatraso sa atin. Grabe. No? I mean, yung, yung saksak natin, iniikot pa eh. Disusi. We love receiving blessings, but we're, you know, worry about giving blessings to other people. Let your speech be gracious. Kaya nga ang doon, influenced by the Spirit. Pastor, how can my words be influenced by the Spirit? If you let the words of Christ dwell in you. I will tell you this much. I know myself, okay? If you find me gracious, hindi po si Pastor James yun. Kasi often, Pastor James is selfish. Often, Pastor James is selfish, self-serving. Meron siyang sariling agenda. That's me. If you find me gracious, I can't take credit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I praise God. I wish I could be indwelt by the Word all the time, 24-7. But you know, divinely influenced. Divinely influenced. Next what it says. Ito, medyo mayroon na ipaintindihan eh. Look at the verse in Colossians. Sabi niya, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. Some of you, salbahay kayo ah, nung narinig niya, sabi mo, aha, ito na yung part ko. Kasi yung mga salita ko, maala. Kung hindi mo kayang tagapin, maala. In fact, nung hinihintay mong sabihin ko yan eh, paliwanag ko siya kung sabi. Okay, ganito kasi yan. Sinabi to the Apostle Paul, remember he said, talk to outsiders. Okay. The connotation of season with salt. Sometime in, in, the, in the intertestamental period, sinabi sa kanila, hindi nga, bago pa nga, the OT, pag nag-offer ka ng sacrifices, yung sacrifice mo, lagyan mo doon ng asin. Lagyan mo ng asin. Bakit, pastor? Para saan? Eh, hindi naman laki na kain yung sacrifice. Precisely. Is that crazy? Susunugin mo na nga lang para sa Panginoon, pasasarapin mo pa? Uy. Nag-click ba? Di ba sa inyo, nag-gets nyo na yung sasabi ko? Pwede ko. Susunugin mo na nga lang, you're going to burn it, you're going to sacrifice it, And yet, you still have to season it. Notice what season. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa sa lagyan mo ng asin. Titimplahin mo. Yun ang season eh. Titimplahin mo pa. Hindi mo na makakainin eh. Susunugin mo yan eh. You're gonna burn that thing to the bone. Right? Right. Now, yung ibang parts you get to eat kasi sa Passover, kailangan yung ibang parts. But basically, the blood, everything else gets burnt. Hindi naman yung parang Pilipino, yung, 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 yung dugo, pwede din naguan. Yung, yung loo, yung, pero siya ng bulaklak. Yung... Hindi, wala silang isaw noong unang panahon. Okay? Tsaka hindi siya makain ng baboy. And that's a different, ano. Pero sabi, season it. Asnan mo. Ibibigay mo na lang sa Panginoon, susunugin mo na nga lang, papasarapin mo. Nag-click ba? Sabihin, kung magbibigay ka sa Panginoon, kung gagamit ka ng salita, Huwag mong basta ibigay lang. Kung kakanta ka, huwag basta kumanta lang. Pasarapin mo. Hey Lord, yan eh. Kung magsasalita ka, yung buhay natin, the way we live, the Bible says, how what we say speaks of God. Season it with salt. Hindi pasarapin basta, could it become effective? Remember what, I, what we learned three weeks ago about salt? Salt is a, a uh, element. It's a chemical. Na pag 
either sobra o wala, ramdam mo kagad. Isang bagay na hindi mo matitinay. Pag maraming asin, pag walang asin, pag tama yung asin, ramdam mo. You always feel it. That's what God wants us to be. Ang gusto ng Panginoon sa mga Kristiyano, nararamdaman tayo ng mundo. And the first way that the world, that the world, will feel us is by how we speak. Bago yun mapatingin sa ugali natin, maririnig muna yung sinasabi natin. No? Naintindihan ko important yung tamang lakad ng pamumuhay sa Panginoon. Pero kung tama naman yung lakad mo, puro chismis naman ito nandito. Season your words. Season it with salt, meaningful words, words that will clarify issue, issues, mend differences, words that will build up rather than tear down, even in the midst of correction. No, I'm not saying do not correct. In fact, Apostle Paul says, interesting, sabi niya, if possible, be at peace with all men. So it's, it's possible to not be at peace with all men. But it doesn't mean you have to kill all men who's not at peace with you. Kahit naroon na kokorek ka, hindi na may ibig sabihin maging malumanay ka sa lahat ng bagay. Kasi meron mga tao excitable eh. The guy who wrote this is really excitable. Si Apostle Paul yun. Very dynamic itong tao ito. Hindi siya basta-basta yung, oh ha? Oh. Hmm. Sige, okay lang. Ang sama mo naman, hindi maganda yung ginagawa mo, hindi ka nakaka-glorify, nakaka-hurt ako sa sinasabi mo. Hindi sinabing ganon, Okay. Hindi sinabing ganon. But what the Bible says, if you do have to say something, dapat ang goal on is to fix things. Don't just point out dirt. Huwag kang magturo lang ng pangit. I-correct mo. Tapos pag panahon na, correct mo. Season it with salt. Don't just throw salt. Don't just, I know. But season our words with salt, even in the midst of correction. Lastly, our words need to be a billboard of hope. Look, let's look back at Colossians. So I could re- reaffirm that to you. Your last statement in Colossians, I love how it says. Uh, sorry, Colossians 4. Okay, watch. Look what it says. Let your speech always be gracious. Seasoned with salt. So, para. Ito yung, it's what will give purpose. So that, dapat daw, gracious tayo, dapat daw seasoned with salt, para, upang, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person para alam mo paano ko ang sasagot sa mga tao. Paano bang sasagot? In 1 Peter chapter 3, as we read earlier, it shows us, you know, the way we are supposed to answer. In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an, that's the word again, to give an answer. Answer about what? Answer about the hope that is in you. But do this with gentleness and respect. Sometimes kasi Pag sinabi natin, vote for the Christian guy. Kasi kayo mga kristyano, wala kayong kwenta. Not saying that. Our words need to be a billboard of hope. Anong klaseng hope, Pastor? The hope that we offer, hindi. The hope that we have in Christ. Alam mo yun yung, like I said kanina, Kahit ano mangyari bukas sa election this week, this country will be different either way. But our hope is not in who wins the election. Our hope is in Christ. The hope of our children is in Christ. The hope of the future is in Christ. We have Maranatha, the blessed hope. 
our words need to speak of that hope. Sometimes I'm afraid we're too gregarious and too excitable about placing hope in institutions, in jobs. Kung magsalita tayo tukul sa mga prospect na trabaho at prospect na kontrata natin, para bang kayang baguhin ng mga yon ang buhay natin? Pag natanggap ko itong trabaho ito, pag nakuha ko itong kontrata ito, pag nagawa ko ito, magbabago yung takbo ng buhay mo. The moment inisip mo ng either institusyon o tao o pera o trabaho, ang magbabago ang buhay mo, matagal nang nagbago ang buhay mo. Pero hindi para sa tama. Pero hindi para sa tama. Bakit? Our hope, words that will bring hope of Christ and make it alive in others. And I love how Apostle Paul says that in Colossians 4. Sabi niya, kande, sabi niya, that we will have an opportunity huh? that I might make it clear, which is how I ought to speak, sabi niya, what? That God will open a door so I could declare the mystery of of Christ. Nakakulong na yung tao ang pinag-uusapan pa rin niya, mystery of Christ. I used this illustration first time. I started this series about living the Christian life in this world. And I want to do a grander thing today. We are called salt. Powerful. Ang asin, one of the most powerful natural elements of the world. It will do two things. It will either clean it or destroy it. Ganun ang salt. Tama? No? Pwede yung linisen. It can preserve it or it can ruin it. Ama? It can make things taste so good. It can make things be so bad. Ama? Ganun ka important ang salt. Let me explain. There you go. I have one granule of salt. Isa lang. At saka isang pichel ng tubig. One granule versus one. Ama? Sa mga mummies, ito kayo. No day one ng anak nyo, pinanganak sa mundo. This is you. You can't even see it. Some of you barely see it. And if you have bad eyes, you won't even see it kahit malapit. Salang? The Bible says these are our words. One granule versus one picture. Pag tinikman mo to, Today, may isang patak na granule, you won't even know it had salt. Tama ba? Sa mga chemist, hindi totoo yung statement na yan. Sa mga normal na taong tulad natin, na hindi magaling sa mat, sa atin, wala yan, pastor, hindi lasa yan. Sa mga chemist, mga engineer na nandito, yung mga lupo ni pastor, dudes, happy birthday, pastor. No? alam natin na hindi totoo yung statement na sinabi ko. Kasi, pag, nung pumatak po yung isang butil ng asin na yon, this water began to have a dramatic change. Pero hindi pa natin ramdam. Hindi pa natin ramdam. Pero chemically, when I dropped that first grain of salt, it had revolutionized this water. Pero hindi pa natin naramdam. Let's do some math. Pastor Dudes, samahan mo na ako sa dali dito. Kailangan ko ng efforts mo kasi lagpasta ng 10. Alam niyo naman ako, ang buhay ko puro pugilism, boxing, MMA, karate. Pag karate, tatlo lang. Half point, half point, half point, full point, six points. No? Or one full point, one point five, or three points. Hanggang doon lang. Pag boxing, hanggang 10. Kailangan ko ng math mo. 
Okay. Ilang taon, ilang araw meron sa isang taon? Ang galing, grabe. Inisip na agad, may sagot na, oh. 365 days. 65 days. 365 days. Sabi ng statistics, you will make the greatest impact on a child. No? On a child between the ages of 4 hanggang 14. Psychiatrists say by the age of 7, 7 years old, yung batang 7 years old is already who they will be as they are an adult. Kaya lang adolescent pa lang. Umpisa pa lang. Nag-umpisa early adolescence pa lang. Yung pitong taon na anak nyo, yan na yan. Patandayin mo hanggang 30 at 40. Yun na yun na 7. No? Some of you na may 7 years old, bigla ka natakot. Pero ang kulit ng anak ko, 7 years old, patay tayo dyan. Kaya mag-ipo ka ng pampiyansa. Okay? 7 years old. Pastor dudes, 365 times 7. Ang bilis ng sagot. Grabe. <laughs> Medyo mahaba. <laughs> okay. Time 7. <laughs> Tulong. <laughs> uh, that's about uh, 2,000 calculator. Ballpark, ballpark. Uh, 2,555. Grabe. Mag-aaral ako mabuti. Mag-iipon ako ng pera. Mag-aaral ako sa mga matataas na eskwelahan para paglaki ko, maging katulad kita. <laughs> 2,000 by the age of 7. What would happen if I place 2,000 grains of salt sa isang buhay na ganito? Eh yung isang patak nga, radically nag-change na. Yung 2,555 grains. That's a revolution waiting to happen. Hindi ko na po kinount how many words we say in a day. I'm just talking about the days of seven years. Sabi nila, mas madali to sir, if you can do something continuously, ha, continuously, over 100 days, it becomes a habit. Tama? Kung meron daw ko isang bagay na pwede mong gawin, tuloy-tuloy, for 100 days, it becomes an actual real habit. 100 days. 100 days. Thank you, Pastor Dudes. Can you imagine if we lived a character, a conduct, a conversation differently over the next 100 days? It will radically change us and the people around us. Your words are powerful. Be careful how you speak. Sa mga magulang na nandito, mag-ingat po tayo. As a reminder to me, si mabilis ako mag-isip. In fact, we respond the way we do to our parents largely because of what we hear from them. Kaya ako minsan kailangan maghabul tayo ng konti eh, no? Come to think of it, hindi na po natin kailangan ng politics para pagbago. Kailangan lang natin to live the way we ought to live as Jesus would have us live. It will make an impact on the people around us. 
at the end of the day, we are actually salt that God has placed in our life and the lives of other people. Dear Father, remind us of who we truly are and who you want us to be, Panginoon. Naiintindihan mo po, Panginoon, ang nasa isip ng lahat. We wish everything could be perfect time where we could respond properly. But Lord, that's I don't know if that's possible. Actually, it's not. But Lord, let our words be filled with grace. Help us to be a people of grace. Let our words be seasoned with salt. Let our words be billboards of hope. Words that will speak of you in times of crisis and problems. Help us to build bridges, Lord, rather than burn bridges. Lord, help us to not only desire to receive grace from you, but to be dispensers of grace. To be gracious people. Not only in deed, but how we do things. But how we speak. Forgive us for being ungracious. Patawarin mo kayo, Panginoon, for being so anxious to receive grace. For being so anxious to celebrate your grace na pinakikita mo sa amin. And yet, we, we are not gracious people. Forgive us, Lord, for not choosing our words. For being irresponsible with our words. But rather, Lord, challenge us to let the words, your words, dwell in us richly. So that our words will speak of your hope. So that our words will speak of repair. So that our words will speak of correction. But yet, ready to give grace ready to help, ready to fix things, Lord. Remind us, Lord, of what it took. Anong, anong kinailangan, Panginoon, para po mapatawad mo kami? Paalala mo, Panginoon, sa amin, kung anong kinailangan mong gawin para matanggap mo kami, Panginoon. Ipaalala mo po, Panginoon, sa amin, kung anong kinailangan gawin, Panginoon, para lang maipakita mo, Panginoon, ang iyong kalooban sa amin at mag-respond kami ng tama. Ipaalala mo sa amin, Panginoon, kung anong kinailangan mangyari, Panginoon, para maging, makituho ka sa amin, Panginoon. Let our words be filled with grace. Please, Lord, I pray. Help us to be gracious folk today. Help us to be careful with our words. Help us, Lord Jesus, to always seek your hope. Panginoon, if there's a person here today na hindi ka nakikilala, Panginoon, bilang tagapagligtas, Panginoon, let that person know kung gaano mo siya kamahal, Panginoon. At Panginoon, at this moment, kung sasabihin niya sa iyo, Panginoon, Panginoon, patawarin mo ako sa aking kasalanan at baguhin mo aking buhay. Panginoon, kaya mong baguhin ang kanyang buhay. Kaya mong isaayos ito ngayong oras na ito, Panginoon. Let that person come to know you. Hindi isang relihiyon, hindi isang option, kundi isang Diyos na pwedeng maghari sa kanyang buhay, Panginoon. Ikaw po, Panginoon, ang kumausap, Panginoon. Lord, this moment, help us to be your children, Lord, na Isipin namin, Panginoon, the words that we spoke over the last several days, the things that we did, the decisions we made, how we dealt with certain situations, Lord. Help us to rethink them today as you heard them, Lord. You heard them, Father, from heaven above. The things that we said and did, Lord Jesus. 
Help us to be a people, Lord, who will chase after you and your will. Help us to be people of the word. A true international Bible church. People who want to seek the biblical path. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Lord, we, to those of us who have children, we, we thank you for mothers who, will, who are pictures of grace. They've made such an impact on us. We thank you, Lord, for them. We praise you, Lord. Now, in your name we pray. Amen.